It was a cold and dreary day when I got the call from the Owens family. They wanted answers, and they wanted them fast. I could hear the desperation in their voices, the need for closure. I took the case, knowing it wouldn't be an easy one. My name's not important. I'm a private eye. I drove out to China Grove, North Carolina, to the house where Robert Owens' body was found. The place looked abandoned, like no one had lived there in years. The grass was overgrown, and the windows were boarded up. I couldn't help but wonder how Owens ended up here, so far from home. I talked to the groundskeeper, who had mowed around the body, thinking it was a training dummy. He seemed shaken up, but I could tell he was holding something back. I pressed him for more information, but he clammed up, saying he didn't want any trouble. I could see fear in his eyes, and I knew there was more to this story than he was letting on. Next, I spoke with a construction worker who had discovered the body. He described the scene in detail, the defensive marks on Owen's arms, the lack of clothing. It didn't add up. If there was no foul play, why was Owens nearly naked? And what about the glass around his body? The construction worker seemed genuinely disturbed by what he'd seen. I could tell he wanted answers just as much as the family did. I tried to get more information from the police, but they were tight-lipped, as usual. They said they were waiting on a toxology report, but I had a feeling they were hiding something. I knew I had to dig deeper. I went back to the crime scene, searching for any clues that might have been overlooked. I found a few shards of glass that the police had missed, and I pocketed them for later analysis. I talked to Owen's family, trying to piece together the last few days of his life. They admitted he had a history of drug use, but they couldn't believe he'd end up in a place like this. They showed me the evidence they handed over to the detective, but I couldn't make sense of it. There were photos of Owens with some shady characters but nothing that pointed to a clear motive for his death. As I continued my investigation, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. The police's unwillingness to share information, the lack of crime scene tape, the glass around the body that all pointed to something sinister. I knew I had to keep pushing to find the truth for the Owens family. They deserved answers and I was determined to get them. I hit the streets, talking to anyone who might have seen Owens in the days leading up to his death. I talked to his friends, his neighbors, even his drug dealer. I followed every lead, no matter how small, hoping to find some clue that would break the case wide open. Finally, after weeks of dead ends and false starts, I caught a break. I got a tip from an anonymous source claiming to have seen Owens with a known drug kingpin the night before his death. I knew it was a long shot, but I had to follow up on it. I staked out the kingpin's hideout, waiting for the right moment to make my move. When I saw him leave, I tailed him to an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. I snuck inside, my heart pounding in my chest, not knowing what I'd find. What I saw inside the warehouse made me want to puke. There was evidence of a drug deal gone wrong, and I knew that Owens had been caught in the crossfire. Blood was everywhere. I called in the police, and they raided the warehouse, arresting the kingpin and his associates. In the end, it turned out that it wasn't Owens that was in that drug house. We were back to square one. I'd figured he'd been in the wrong place at the wrong time, that he'd gotten mixed up with the wrong crowd, and it had cost him his life. Sometimes my gut is wrong. The Owens family was devastated when I told them my lead didn't pan out. They didn't feel any better that through the process we took out a known drug dealer. I understand. They didn't get the answers they were looking for. I'm not technically on the case anymore. The family couldn't afford to pay me indefinitely. But after seeing what I've seen, I can't walk away. 
Robert Owens had made some bad choices in his life, but he didn't deserve to die, not like that. No one does. I know that I still have a job to do, on the clock or not. Maybe I'll never find what I'm looking for, or maybe I will. Either way, it's not going to make the loss of this young man any easier for his family. <laughs>